Hello and welcome to the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you major news developments from across the world. Our headlines Protesters across the world set to resist Israeli annexation plan. Polish presidential election will move into the second round. New York City Council passes a $1 billion cut for police, but protesters say that's not enough. Industrial accident in thermal power plant in India kills 6 and injures 16. And Kosovo's president may resign over looming war crimes indictment. We begin today with an update on the COVID-19 pandemic. Over 10.6 million cases have been reported around the world as of today afternoon. Of these, nearly 4.3 million are still active cases and around, and around 514,000 ended in fatalities. The United States, Brazil, Russia, India and the United Kingdom continue to be the worst affected countries. The five together have reported over 53% of the total reported cases and 50% of the fatalities. Excluding the UK, which does not record active or recovered cases among the reported infections, the other four account for nearly 58% of the active cases worldwide. Meanwhile, around the world, people have begun or plan to begin protests today against Israel's proposed annexation plan of occupied Palestinian territories. The protesters are demanding international sanctions against Israel if it goes ahead with the move. Reports have emerged in the meantime that the Israeli government might postpone the annexation. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu hinted as much on Monday. This may be due to protests by political parties, civil society groups and activists across the world, as well as diplomatic pressure by countries otherwise allied to Israel. At least one, one country, that's the Netherlands, has seen a bill being passed calling for sanctions if the annexation moves forward. Bills have also been tabled in other countries. Earlier yesterday, Netanyahu was cited by sources in the government of being wary of diplomatic problems that could entail the annexation. Surprisingly, Democratic Party legislators in the US Congress have tabled a bill calling on the government to withhold, withhold nearly $4 billion of annual US aid to Israel in the event of an annexation. Over 191 members of the US House of Representatives had written to Netanyahu to halt his plans. According to this proposed plan, large parts of the occupied West Bank and the Jordan Valley will be occupied by Israel. The land is where a lot of illegal settlements have been built. They will be formally annexed to the Israeli state. In our next story, the Polish presidential elections are set to go for a second round after incumbent Andrzej Duda failed to secure the required majority in the first round. The first round was held on June 28th. In the second round, he will face civic platforms Rafael Sarkovsky on July 12th. In the first round, Duda, who is backed by the incumbent right-wing Law and Justice Party, garnered 43.5% of the votes, while Sarkovsky, the, second, the war's current Warsaw mayor, came second with 30.5% of the votes. The presidential election has become an arena of ideological battle between the right-wing PIS and the liberal civic platform. The presidential polls were originally scheduled for May 10th, but were postponed due to the COVID-19 outbreak. The Law and Justice Party, that's the PIS, attempted to conduct the polls in May, trying to cash in on Duda's strong approval ratings at the time. The move was strongly criticised by the opposition and even PIS's ruling coalition partners, forcing the postponement. The PIS, which has lost its majority in the Polish Senate in the October 2019 elections, requires Duda's re-election to secure its control over the government. We now go to India, where a third industrial accident has killed several people in less than a month. At least six were killed, 16 workers injured and many feared trapped, when a boiler exploded at a major thermal power plant in the southern Indian state of Tamil Nadu. The blast occurred in the government-owned Naiveli Lignite Corporation. The mishap occurred at a fifth unit of the thermal power station 2, where workers were in the process of resuming operations this morning. According to reports, accidents are not new in the plant. Eight workers from the same plant had suffered burn injuries in a similar incident in May, but there were no fatalities at that time. This, come clo this comes close on the heels of another industrial accident, a gas leak in the neighbouring state of Andhra Pradesh that claimed two lives. Earlier, 12 people died and hundreds were hospitalized following a gas leak at, a, at the LG Polymers plant on May 7th in the same state. Today's blast is another addition to several industrial accidents in the country, occurring in circumstances related to counter-pandemic lockdowns. As the country eases these restrictions, there are concerns that more such accidents could occur if authorities are not careful. In the US, over a month after the killing of George Floyd, debates rage over defunding the police. In New York City, the City Council passed a budget claiming a cut of $1 billion US dollars for the Police Department or the NYPD. The total budget of over $88 billion was passed yesterday, even as thousands protested outside the City Hall. Activists are not happy about the budget cut though and have criticised the City Administration for engaging in accounting tricks. The budget cut, even though significant, still leaves the police with close to $5 billion in direct operating funding, with a similar number to match under other services. The NYPD continues to be among the highest funded departments in the City. Protesters have pointed out that the only reform the police budget cut brings about is shifting away such services such as homeless outreach and school safety to other departments. The rest of the cuts come from overtime reduction, cancelling police classes and shifting crossing guards. 
Protesters have also criticized the overall budget cuts of close to $5 billion this year. They say this translates into freezing and freezing of hiring and incentives, social welfare, education and healthcare. The city administration justified the cuts as a result of the revenue shortfall of over $9 billion due to the pandemic. The NYC public advocate Juman Williams has publicly stated that he will use the reserve power of his office and block the budget. The Kosovar president Hashim Tachi is facing the heat over impending war crimes indictments. Last week, the Hague-based Kosovo Specialist Chamber and Specialist Prosecutor's Office filed an indictment against him and former parliamentary speaker Kadri Veseli, among others. The indictment has been made on 10 counts including murder, enforced disappearances, persecution and torture during the Kosovo War by forces of the Kosovo Liberation Army. Both Tachi and Veseli have denied these allegations with Tachi announcing his resignation if the court approves the indictment. A year ago, former KLA leader and Prime Minister Ramush Haradinaj had resigned from his post after being summoned for questioning by the KSC and SPO. Tachi and Veseli were among the top commanders in the KLA at the time when the alleged war crimes against ethnic Serbs and political opponents were committed. The court established in 2017 and recognized by Kosovar law is led by a team of international jurists to deal with the KLA's actions during the war. The KSC and SPO was established following widespread criticisms against the International Criminal Tribunal for the former, for the former Yugoslavia or the ICTY for solely indicting Serbian political leadership for the atrocities during the Kosovo War. The progressive sections across Europe have been demanding an indictment to the various crimes committed by NATO and its allied forces like the KLA. That's all we have in this episode of the International Roundup. We'll be back tomorrow with the latest news developments from across the world. Until then, keep watching People's Dispatch.